for the last talk of this morning session. Well, actually for this day, because uh, this afternoon we have a, an afternoon off. So uh, it's my pleasure to welcome uh, Max van Genesse, uh, who will talk today about Brown in Motion uh, on Wasserstein spaces. Please, Max. Use my own audio now. Is that okay? Okay. Otherwise, I can stop. Now. Okay. So um, I would like to thank the organizers for the invitation to this meeting. It's a great privilege to be here. I should have come many years before. I recognize recognize now, and I'm glad I finally made it. So thank you very much. It's a, it's a great privilege to be here among this distinguished uh, group of colleagues. Okay. So I will talk about. Um, a slightly off mainstream subject, but which is my uh, subject of passion over quite some years. Um, it will be uh, about the attempt to construct uh, stochastic processes on the space of probability measures, which deserve or which have some properties which uh, make them candidates for a Brownian motion on Wasserstein space. Uh, so, as I just said, it's slightly, slightly off mainstream, and I decided to give this as a survey talk on some results of the uh, past couple of years, because uh, this is probably the best that I can contribute at this moment to this uh, exciting meeting. Okay, and the outline of my talk is that uh, I will start with a little bit of motivation, and then I will introduce, uh, then I will introduce uh, the Dean Kawasaki equation, which is an equation from statistical physics uh, that comes about naturally in this context. And I will discuss some, saying something which is probably can be called a no-go theorem for the actual thing that I want to do. So I start basically with an assertion which, uh, which suggests that what I wanted to do and what I want to do, have been wanting to do over the last 10 or 15 years is basically impossible. However, this no-go theorem, we discovered this no-go theorem only recently. And if we had discovered it before, we would not have done all the work that we did before which uh, basically shows that the Nogo theorem is not, still allows for a little bit of, a, of an exit. And I would like to introduce you, uh, I would like to present basically by pictures, a couple of these exits that we have found even before we knew about this Nogo theorem. So that's, the, that's the, the outline of my talk. So I start with motivation, Nogo theorem, and then I'll tell you something, some workarounds around the Nogo theorem although this is not quite historic, your historical order. So let's start with some motivation. Okay, I start with certain dynamical systems on the space of uh, Wasserstein, uh, on the Wasserstein space of probability measures, which is our preferred state space. We want to do analysis, you know, data science, uh, or, or even as I shall try to do on, uh, in, in probability. So let's start with this thing with a paper by Felix from, I guess, 2001, which uh, was inspirational for many of us, I guess everyone in the room, where Felix introduced uh, this formal Riemannian calculus uh, with this Riemannian structure on the then so uh, to be interpreted tangent bundle of probability measures. And he showed in this paper that the uh, quadratic Wasserstein distance can be interpreted as the intrinsic distance, which comes with this formal Riemannian tensor structure. And also he uh, gave another uh, computation which showed that the gradient flow for the entropy can be quite easily understood as a gradient uh, dynamics or um, gradient descent dynamics for the entropy function. Uh, then basically at the same time, or I, I attribute this, this statement uh, uh, to uh, uh, Brenier, although it's, it's more or less a folklore statement and I would make this statement or I would like to make this kind of a remark that I guess that many of the things that you discover your own in optimal transportation in some way or the other, it's not quite know whether it's not quite clear whether um, Jan Pani already knew that or was just didn't bother to write down anyway. So it's one of those statements that everybody knows and Pani probably knew already 200 years ago that the geodesic equation on Wasserstein space basically co corresponds to um, the uh, compressible Euler equation. Uh, I'm saying this because this geodesics 
And the geodesic equation on Wasserstein space, of course, is, is already a second order equation, which leaves the framework of this first order dynamical systems on, uh, on Wasserstein space. So by this very elementary remark, you see that already looking at second order dynamical systems on Wasserstein space may be a beneficial thing. And then um, I myself, for my own enjoyment, basically made, made, made some computations um, which then appeared in 2012. Um, uh, yesterday, Christian was nice enough to mention this. So I made some computations using the second order calculus on Wasserstein space, and I looked at now not geodesics, which would correspond to the case when you have zero here on the right hand side. So this, so this equation here, if you like, is the geodesic equation on Wasserstein space. And of course, uh, the next step in uh, when you when you do not want to consider geodesics alone, the next step is to look at uh, equations of motion or Newtonian or Hamiltonian system. So this would be uh, this equation that I write here would be just uh, the blueprint equation for a, a Newton's law of motion, which says that acceleration of a curve on this Wasserstein space is given by by a force, which is then uh, given as the gradient of an energy function. So F here plays the role of an energy function. And so this is a Newton's law, which is induced from F. And if we choose F in this fashion, which is the entropy uh, squared or the, the Fisher information, the gradient of the entropy squared, which we also call the Fisher information. And if there's an additional potential specified in the system. So then if we solve this equation here, I mean, suppose we know what it actually means and suppose we can solve this equation, then this equation actually, or this, this dynamical system of the trajectories uh, can be mapped to give a solution to the Schrodinger equation. And the mapping that uh, maps these solutions, so recall that this is now a second order equation. The boxed equation is a second order equation in our tangent bundle. So a state of the second order equation is actually a tangent vector. And so a tangent vector here it con consists of two pieces. It contains a, a base point mu and it contains a velocity. So you can use these two components of this state of the second order ODE to define uh, this now complex valued function, but just using this usual decomposition. And then you find function, which I have just introduced, actually does solve the Schrodinger equation. So, <clears throat> and the, the transformation also can be done in reverse fashion. So in that regard, solutions to the Schrodinger equation are in fact exactly solutions to this Newton's equation on Wasserstein space when you choose the potential function f in an appropriate function in an appropriate fashion. And I would, um, yeah, so I would like to highlight, I mean, this is not the main point of my talk, um, but I just added this little slide to the, to, to, to my talk today because it adds to the general theme of the workshop and it adds to the, to the idea that it makes sense to look at dynamical systems on Wasserstein space, not only for first order uh, dynamical systems, but also second order dynamical system. And since I try to be a probabilist, the next step of course is very natural that I look at dynamical uh, um, uh, stochastic dynamical systems on Wasserstein space. Okay, so this is advertisement. This slide here is advertisement for second order dynamical systems in Wasserstein space. This was advertisement for first order dynamical systems in Wasserstein space. And the next slide will be advertisement for stochastic dynamical systems on Wasserstein space. Before, before. Right, so again, so if, yes. I, so if you have, so this is a second order equation that, that I'm looking at. So the, the tangent vector is a mu dot, a mu dot. This is not a state. It's actually a dynamical description of the system at a certain moment. It comes with a certain mass distribution at most. So in the, the, the dynamical part, the velocity vector field is a gradient of something in this object. And so I don't care about the constant of integration and just use this S and plug it. Is that an answer to the question? Yes. And. And what you can also do, this auto Riemannian structure, every Riemannian manifold has a natural symplectic structure. You can work it out. You can work also the symplectic structure in the auto case. You can just do a little bit of computation. It's a straightforward thing. And then you can, and, and then you can analyze <clears throat> the role that this mapping actually plays. And you can find that this conversion of this state mu or mu dot to be precise into this wave function is actually a symplectic morphism between the different symplectic structures. People in quantum mechanics don't overstretch the fact that um, the Schrodinger equation in its 
wave function representation is a Hamiltonian system. It can be understood as a Hamiltonian, a classic, so to say, Hamiltonian system using the compact structure of wave functions. And this thing here, this map here, which we call Marlon transform, is effectively modulo one co-dimension, so to say, is a symplectic isomorphism. So therefore, these two descriptions of the Schrodinger equation are totally equivalent from, an, from a dynamical system point. Of view. So, so, so that emphasizes this point. And finally, again, this is not actually the talk of the subject of my talk, but since it was mentioned yesterday, I put a little bit of emphasis on, emphasis on it. Finally, I would like to highlight the point, which is probably known for everyone who understands the reason or the meaning of the thing. This complex number here is in this representation is, is an artifact or it's just a consequence of this choice of coordinates. There is no complex time. So in this representation here, in the, in the, in the, in the, in the Newton's time representation, there is just no complex time. It's, it's not there. It's just a choice of coordinates which brings up complex time. Okay, so that, that was advertisement for second order dynamical systems on, on, on Wasserstein space. And people who worked actually on the rigorous mathematics of this, uh, I, I think the, the, the most active researcher in this field is Wilfried Gangbo, who did some substantial, substantial work on these uh, dynamical systems. Uh, but but it's a, these computations are formal and it's a challenging uh, thing to do this on a totally sound mathematical rigorous basis. And then finally, Christian also mentioned it, just to conclude this slide properly, Christian mentioned yesterday, something that I learned from Giovanni Conforti when he, when he was with me as, as a postdoc. So if you replace here, and he, he, Christian emphasized this enough yesterday, if you replace this plus by a minus here, and you write down the, what it actually means, this ODE here, it's all second order ODE, this is the displacement interpolation for the Schrodinger problem. So the Schrodinger problem and the Schrodinger equation in this representation just if, uh, distinguish one another from putting a plus or a minus. This is actually not the subject of my talk. <laughs> the subject of my talk is about uh, advertisement for dynamical systems on, on, on Wasserstein space. So, uh, so what I want to study and what I want, what I'm doing since 15 years or something, is trying to introduce models which can serve as Brownian motion on Wasserstein space. So it's a Brownian motion on a Riemannian manifold, but in this case on an infinite-dimensional Riemannian manifold. And that, could, that would be basically a natural thing to look at, right? Because it would be the natural fluctuations of a, of a system which has total conserved, which is a conserved mass, but which um, performs random motion according to the energy which is invested by dissipation. So if you think about this physical interpretation of optimal transportation, it says that redistribution of mass follows statistics governed by uh, energy dissipation. Okay, just for those who are not so familiar with Brownian motion on Riemannian manifolds, uh, here is this one little slide. So, if you have your preferred Brownian motion on a manifold, uh, your preferred Riemannian manifold or metric space, even, uh, then you can, uh, to, in order to have an idea of what a Brownian motion on this space is, you can just start uh, what is called a geodesic random walk or a metric random walk, which is just a piecewise constant Markov, Markov chain, basically, which Select uniformly in spheres of the current current point, the, the target point, and then does the jump. This has a radius, of course, and then you can do uh, hydrodynamic scaling. You scale the radius, make it smaller and smaller by one over k, and you speed up time in a quadratic fashion. Then you can do a <clears throat> then in, in, in on good metric spaces, you can argue that this is a sequence of processes which are compact. And then the limiting process will be something like this. And this is then your candidate of a Brownian motion. So you see what you need on a naive basis, you need only a metric, so to say, to, to start with the procedure. That's why I emphasize that it's good, good metric. Okay, to be honest, that's one of the difficulties. You do not need only a metric, but you also need a uniform distribution on, on balls, which is of course an in infinite dimension. It's a difficult thing, basically impossible thing. But nevertheless, it gives you some idea. And um, this corresponding diffusion process that you constructed, it will still exhibit the metric in a quite uh, natural fashion. Because if you look at the heat kernel that comes with this diffusion process in an exponential scaling or in short time asymptotics, it, uh, it exhibits exactly the distance of your metric space. So whatever uh, kind of stochastic process on a manifold 
is given to you, if someone says this is a Brownian motion on this space, the first thing to check whether this Brownian motion is actually really related to the geometry of the space is uh, this, this short term asymptotics. Because this is essentially saying that the large deviations rate functional for this process, so the small time asymptotics are exactly given by this metric structure of the underlying space. So, and what, um, what we would like to do is we would like to discuss several processes on mass distribution, which satisfy this basic requirement. Okay, again, so that's my motivation. What if we now choose as our metric space, uh, the Wasserstein space of probability measures? Can we, can we construct such a process? Uh, can you tell me what is my finishing time? Uh, I see. Okay. 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 Thank you. Okay. And um, now I'm still in the motivation part. So there are various ways to construct Brownian motions on remaining manifolds. One is this Markov chain, CL, uh, central limit theorem, which, but you can also use charts and solve stochastic differential equations and then put the thing back. So that is the approach of constructing a Brownian motion on, with an SDE on a manifold. Here we have an infinite dimensional manifold. So we need to be ready to deal with stochastic partial differential equations because we are doing SDEs in infinite dimensions. And if you think about this, uh, this, this SPDE approach a little and you think about what is the actual uh, covariance matrix so that features the right Riemannian structure, then you would necessarily come up with such a noise term on the right hand side. So I'm, I'm changing gear now at this moment. I'm talking about stochastic partial differential equations. Since we will basically be guided to some extent by this stochastic partial differential equation representation. So you will see in one slide why this choice of multiplicative noise. Okay, probably I should take one step back. So if we don't have this, so in some sense, what I'm doing at this moment, I'm looking at, a, at an equation, which is like this, which is a B of XT. Sorry, I'm doing this for all, the, all those who are not so familiar with uh, stochastic differential equations. So, so this is the, your, your, your familiar notation of a stochastic differential equation in finite dimensions. But now the symbol X gets replaced the by, by mu. And delta mu is a, a gradient operator. Here B is a, is a gradient vector field. So the gradient operator here is the like, Plus here, it's just a tangential gradient operator on Wasserstein space. And the sigma of X of T, it's a transformation of, this no, of the characteristic statistics of the noise, will be this interesting uh, X dependent tensor, which is applied onto a white noise. So that's, that's the logic of this equation as a stochastic partial differential equation. And if you write down a Riemannian Brownian motion in charts, you will, of course, see this Riemannian tensor encoded in the sigma if you want to have the right noise structure. And here, the sigma is this strange transformation of, of the, the noise. Uh, you will see in a second why it is natural. And uh, this Laplacian in front, I write because it's the, it's the best kind of regularizing tangential object that can help you to deal with, uh, with this irregular, uh, irregular noise. On the there was there a square root? No, 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 no. It's absolutely important. It's a square root. So if you let me, I'm sorry. It's really a square root. Yeah. So let me write this in a different fashion. I'm just I'm multiplying by square root of mu, which means that I write what uh, I write this as a. I write this as a mu times one over square root of mu oh, dBT, dWT. And this would tell me that I'm having basically a continuity equation, which is driven by a random field, by a random field. But the random field is scaled in such a way that it, it scales, the, the actual total fluctuations of the random field are locally scaled in an inverse proportional way by the actual density of the system. So, yes. Yes, absolutely, exactly, it's absolutely correct. Uh, so this would be basically, if this guy is, let me say it again, if this guy is replaced by some a fixed velocity, by some fixed field psi, this would be just uh, transport in a random, in, by a random vector field. But here we, we scale 
let me say it again, we scale the noise characteristics of this random vector field in such a way that we have a characteristic scaling of mass versus fluctuation. That's important for this Otto interpretation or for this Otto Riemannian uh, perspective. It is just exactly the right type of scaling as you shall, shall see in a moment. Okay, so when you think about a natural SPDE description of such a Brownian motion, I claim that if you think about for, for a while, you will, you will arrive at this equation inevitably. And then several years later, I was told by a colleague that this equation actually has a name in physics and it's called the Dean Kawasaki equation. And it's, uh, the, um, it's, it's one of the standard equations to describe, uh, uh, or it's, 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 it's one of the standard equations in, in statistical field theory, so to say. So it's, a, it's um, yeah, it describes what people call non-equilibrium uh, hydrodynamic fluctuations. Uh, and it appears in, uh, as a candidate description of so-called mesoscopic system. So if you have a microscopic system and you do a large N limit, like a hydrodynamic limit, then you, and, and there's some intermediate scaling regimes that these are the type of arguments that you find in these papers, such that you still see, you already see hydrodynamic large scale behavior, but there's fluctuations around. And this equation here is supposed to describe that. So there are other models or other derivations of this equation. Okay, so that's, that would be the number one equation that we would like to solve. It is called the Dean Kawasaki equation. And that will be, in a way, our starting point and our guidance in this, uh, in this uh, field. OK, now comes a few rigorous uh, results, uh, which I will only probably most of the time motivate and will not uh, uh, give too many details about. So here's the no-go result about the Dean Kawasaki equation, which is the most recent one in this context from us. And uh, which is interesting, probably for some of people, uh, some of the people who work in particular in SPDE theory. So first of all, we have need to make a definition of what we find, what we understand by a solution. This stochastic partial differential equation is really bad. There has been a lot of in, in development in stochastic partial differential equations over the last couple of years, uh, which uh, was triggered by the works of Martin Heyer and regularity structures and, and Massimiliano Gubinelli with this power controlled calculus. But this equation is, uh, is uh, supercritical with respect to this uh, renormalization theory. So uh, we will now show that this equation is really ill posed, which is not in contrast to the existing recent theory. And one first step in the analysis of such equations would be to come up with a proper definition of a solution. Uh, and should probably mention that uh, there, is a familiar, there is a familiar class of uh, SPDE which is also famous in measure valued SPDE processes, which would probably read like this, plus square root of mu dw. So if you don't write the divergence, but uh, yeah, just write like this, where now w is a scalar random field, then this equation is called, uh, or this, this SPDE describes super Brownian motion, which is a standard model in measure valued processes. So that's super Brownian motion. SPDE, or sometimes it's called dawson watanabe process. And you see that there's an enormous, I mean, there's a certain similarity here between the two SPDEs. So the difference between the very well established model of super Brownian motion and this Dean Kawasaki equation is just this innocent divergence operator, which you probably thought. But there is a solution concept for super Brownian motion, which is very effective. And we just copy this in this case. So we say that we have a solution to this Dean Kawasaki equation if. For all smooth test functions, where is an F for all F? For all test functions, uh, which are compactly supported, say, if we test the measure value process and subtract a bounded variation part, which is obtained by mapping the Laplace in the drift operator onto the test function, we want that this is a martingale, which is in a way the replacement of saying that this is constant over time in case we had a deterministic equation. In this case, the new process would be uh, just a deterministic solution to the heat equation. But now we don't ask that this is constant. We want that this is just a martingale and the quadratic variation process of this martingale needs to have this structure. That's our concept of a solution for the Dean Kawasaki equation. And uh, as, as, you might, uh, in, 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 as you might expect, or as you might guess from the structure of the noise, 
it's exactly the same concept of a, of a smartening gas solution that is used for super Brownian motion, except that for super Brownian motion, you don't have the gradient. It's just an F squared. And here, the difference between super Brownian motion and, and uh, Dean Kawasaki is just this gradient in the, in the, in the function. Yeah? And um, yes, and what I also would like to say that this term here, of course, is exactly the term that you expect from the auto calculus. This is exactly the gamma, the Carré Duchamp that you would like to see. Basically, what you specify here is the Carré Duchamp operator or the second order uh, coefficient, uh, the, the, the second order jet guy, so to say. Uh, that, that's exactly the second order jet in, for this stochastic process. Uh, which you want to see if you want to see this auto uh, auto energy under tangential under tangential energy. So so that this is the, this this red f and mu squared comes exactly from this structure here. So the divergence you dualize it, you put it on the grade on the f that gives you the gradient on the f. And then you have the square root. And you have the white noise, so therefore you just contract the diagonal. So therefore the grade mu the square root of mu becomes a mu, and the grade of f is squared. So that's why after an integration by parts and doing the expectation, you see exactly this energy for the fluctuation. It's exactly the right kind of shown operation. And now comes the Inogo result, uh, which says, okay, so this solution here, and, and by the way, beta here is a drift parameter, right? It just, the Laplacian here is just diffusion. So it's just you know, the usual thermal diffusion which you add to the system. So they have, you have two levels, levels of activity, if you like. So you have basically a system, that's the model here. You have a system which performs heat flow, but then it is, it is in, a, in a bath, in some sort of a heat bath, and the heat bath pushes the substance around according to these fluctuations. That's, that's the, this Dean Kawasaki equation. And so then you have, since you have two levels of, in this theory, you have two levels of activity, you have one degree of freedom, say, which measures actually the thermal diffusivity of the substance alone. And depending on the scaling, then you have normalized to be one, you have a certain thermal diffusivity of the exterior um, substrate, so to say. And now comes the interesting theorem here. Say this, this in the sense of the solution that you have just defined, this equation has a solution if and only if beta is essentially integer value. And in this case, uh, the, the solution is given as just the empirical distribution of independent Brownian motion. So it says that the Dean Kawasaki equation makes sense as just a field theoretic description of independent Brownian motions, but you have to tune the parameters correctly to actually match uh, the, 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 the field, the random field, if you like, that, that you obtain when you do any independent Brownian motions. And except that if you don't scale the parameters like this, then there is no solution. This is a remarkable rigidity of this equation. And um, for instance, if, you go, if we go back to the super Brownian motion, this thing here is a reasonable and rich model for all the, for, a for a continuum of beta parameters. And you can solve it completely. But, but this equation here has a tremendous rigidity with respect to the parameter beta. So it's, uh, it, 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 solutions exist only if beta is integer, but even. Uh, the rest of the talk will certainly be very non-technical, so therefore I give you two lines of proof for this result here that we obtained uh, some while ago. It's just two things. First of all, you write down, there is a, there is a no, nice log Laplace duality for this particular equation. So if you assume you have a solution, then you can do a little bit of Eto formula, and you can write down exactly the log Laplace transform of this equation. This log Laplace transform is something that people like to do in measure value process anyway. And here you get a very explicit log Laplace uh, equation, which is basically uh, solved by a nonlinear, but just by the Hamilton Jacobi semigroup again. In other words, you can compute uh, moments and expectations of the system very, very nicely and explicitly, just using a Hamilton Jacobi equation. And the second lemma is uh, just a lemma about non negative integer, non negative random variables. And it says that if you have a non-negative random variable and you introduce this, uh, this uh, probability generating function, and if this non-negative <clears throat> random variable has a probability generating function, which is smooth at the origin, then this random variable must necessarily be integer value, almost truly. It's just two very small lemmas. If you put them together, you, 
combined statements, you arrive at this in remarkable rigidity. Okay, so what does this say? This says that our candidate SPDE for the Dean Kawasaki, or the, uh, our candidate SPDE for this Brownian motion also trans space does not exist, or it's just something trivial because it's just independent Brownian motions. But of course we have some positive examples where we can modify the equation a little bit in order to obtain interesting models. And now I'm coming back some, to something that I did long, long time ago. And it's one of the three types of models that, I, that, that we have that basically does something like a job. I'm now in one dimension. I want to do Brownian motion on Russell-Strand space, which on, on probability measures in one dimension. And I'm not quite sure at this point, I have to take a break probably and I, I need to um, make a decision now which model I shall present to you. Okay, let me go by pictures for most of the time and then one model I shall uh, present with a little bit more care because some of this you might have seen already. So the point is that the D Kawasaki equation in a way becomes trivial because we have not the right type of correlation in the system. So all these models that I shall present at this in the, in the, in the next few minutes, all these models are trying to introduce correlation into the system such that uh, you can somehow evade the dichotomy between law of large number and simple limit theory. What we see here, probably that's a worthwhile remark. This, let's go back to the Dean Kawasaki equation, although it's probably not so interesting after this result. This Dean Kawasaki equation is an equation which is supposed to interpolate between law of large numbers, which is uh, this guy, and uh, in a way, central limit theory, which is a diffusive behavior. So when we talk about the mesoscopic system, it's somehow a system which we would uh, locate somewhere in between those two scaling extremes, law of large numbers and fluctuations. And so if that is supposed to come from a particle model, you need to come up with a particle model where you scale the correlation in the system in such a way that if you do a large end limit, you obtain a system which is, has a hydrodynamic behavior and fluctuations at the same time. It's not so easy to come up with systems that do not follow this typical dichotomy of law of large numbers and uh, hydrodynamic uh, and fluctuations. And here is one such a system that we found a long time ago. <clears throat> so this is a system which describes an, an unharmonic chain. So here it would be basically say in these simulations, which are also all you could think of uh, here we show trajectories of four different particles here, this is time. This is time and this is space. This is all the unit interval. In fact, this motion is, 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 is confined to be the unit interval. And what we see here is the motion of four particles which move in the unit interval. They are mainly driven by Brownian motion, but then each of these guys has a neighbor to the left and a neighbor to the right. And we have an electrostatic attraction Depending on so if beta is small, this is positively negative. So we have an, we have an <clears throat> electrostatic attraction of each of the particles to its right or left neighbor. Beta is a strength parameter of this, and here you see that there's some scaling with regards to the number of particles. And depending on the strength of this attraction, we can observe different models. And what we find here, for instance, when we have beta very small, so I should probably say beta is counteracting this attraction. We see that this, this uh, mutual attraction of the processes generates a picture such that these particles actually like to stay together and the, the bulk of the particles will reduce its speed. So they, 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 under this effect, the particles will form clusters. And if you look at a cluster from far away, you see a bigger cluster which has less diffusivity, which is exactly the, th the thing that we would like to observe in this scaling of diffusivity versus mass. And we showed a long time ago that you can do in hydrodynamic scaling 
of this particle system. So you replace now, you pass to the measure value description of this system. And if you pass to this, if it, you, then it's possible to pass to a, to a limit and to identify a limiting dynamics of this system, which is, which is, now this is rigorous here. Of course, it needs to be interpreted, but it's a rigorous statement, which is our Dean Kawasaki equation with, that, with general beta, but with a singular additional normalization in the drift. So there's a strange singular distribution which you had, have to insert into the system in order to get an interesting non-trivial uh, dynamics. In here. Okay, that, that's one of our models. And we have done some work a long time ago with Theo Sturm about this, about the invariant measure. And there is what we call the entropic measure, which is the invariant measure for the system, which is not a big surprise because the entropy plays the dominant role for the heat equation part in the system, which is, as we all know, the gradient dynamics. So this would be the natural invariant measure for this dynamics. Then we have for this system, we have exactly this short-term asymptotics that we would like to see. It has exactly this uh, large deviations properties in terms of the heat kernel, which brings up the quadratic Wasserstein's distance as we as we want. And this uh, was was very made us very happy. But but the model is very very non-local in, in it in terms of its construction. And now I have let's let's say now I have four five minutes left, and I will really go only by pictures. A more recent version of this idea that particles can come together, form larger particles, and then slow down in their divisivity is what we call the modified Arasia flow. The Arasia flow is a standard model in the study of chaotic systems. It's a, it's a system of Brownian motions which start from everywhere in the continuum. And then uh, once two Brownian particles meet, they just move together. That's the Arasia flow. It's a model of, if you like, balls in a chaotic fluid which can stick together. And we just uh, devised a modified version of this Arasia flow, which says that if particles come together, then they, they carry along mass, then the scaling, so the diffusivity after they come together is scaled down. So what you see here is, if you like, you can guess, or you can, with a little bit of goodwill, you can see that this simulation actually gives exactly this feature. You have three particles, say each of them has mass one tenth, and then they form a particle here of mass three tenths, and the three tenths is the inverse diffusivity now of the particle that is conti that continues. The mathematical description of this Arasia flow follows a little bit this idea of Kunita flows. This is this is the kind of a theory in which you would want to work to describe this. So you describe the system as a field of martingales, which is indexed by the continuum, and you specify basically the, cor the correlation structure of these martingales. And with this correlation field, we could, with this field of martingales, we can then pass to the corresponding push forward measure. So we have now, a, if you like, a chaotic dynamical system, and we can study the effect of this chaotic dynamical system when we carry mass along with this dynamical system. Uh, this is then a stochastic process in the space of, of um, probability measures. And we can see that this system, which is constructed in a very different fashion as the one uh, we started with, this system or this stochastic process, again, solves a version of the Dean Kawasaki equation. So we have a very different system, but given the same SPDE. And here is Laplacian operator. The star should be here. The Laplacian operator that is here is not quite a Laplacian operator. It's the Laplacian, if you like, of the support of the measure which is again a singular thing, but I would, like to, I would like to stress that if you don't work with particles which carry different masses, you don't basically see a difference between this nonlinear Laplace operator and the linear operator. So this might have, this is a version or this is a, a brother of the Laplacian, which looks like quite the Laplacian if you don't pay attention to it. And if, if, if your system is simple. And it might have been overlooked, I don't know, by some people who do with this, that you have to deal with this kind of levels. And now finally, I will skip more of the mathematics. And now our most recent model, remind, remember this was meant as an advertisement talk, so therefore um, I don't expect you to uh, go into the details. So this is our most recent version of this modified Arasia flow. We have now 
a reversible version of this modified Arasia forward split, which has now a splitting component. Again, the construction is very different. And what, what we see here is the simulation of this model. So here you could think of, yeah, let me spend two more minutes just on this picture and then I probably finish. So what we see here in this simulation is a version of this or is a simulation of this new model which we, which we came up with. It is a measure valued system, an infinite dimensional measure valued system. And if you look, and, and the, the red trajectory is the center of mass of the system. And the center of mass of this system is a Brownian motion. So in a way you could think of this as being just a Brownian motion, it's just the trajectory of a Brownian motion that starts at the origin at, at time equal zero. But then we allow for this Brownian motion to immediately decompose into a continuum of smaller particles of various sizes. Each of these particles performs a Brownian motion, but this Brownian motion of the individual particle is again scaled inverse proportional to its mass. And then these particles, they can just split off and then they can come together again, form a bigger particle, stay for a while, slow down the diffusivity and then break up again. This is a modified Arasia flow with splitting. And if you look into the simulation of these trajectories, I'm not sure if it's really convincing on this, but here color code uh, is for weight. So let me just try to isolate something. Yeah, so here you can see here you have such an, here you have such an event when you have, if you like, a bigger particle, then which is relatively slow, if you like, or not so diffusing, not so so widely. So you have a you have a dark trajectory, which is a particle of relatively huge weight, which is diffusing relatively slowly in comparison to what is going afterwards. And then here you have a breakup event. And then this particle breaks up into smaller guys, which then diffuse with a higher diffusivity. And so this is a system which is pulsating as a diffusing, sorry, this is a system which is a pulsating, coalescing, fragmentating system, which is an honest infinite dimensional measure value process. Its center of mass is like a Brownian trajectory, but a level below, you have something quite exciting going on. And, um, and again, this is a process, let me just uh, skip over to the main characteristics. Again, this is a process which is an honest measure valued stochastic process. It, it uh, assumes values in the space of probability measures because the total, the total mass of the system does not change and it has the right uh, large deviations result, which means that uh, the, 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 the statistics or the fluctuations of the systems are again governed by a quadratic Wasserstein distance. So therefore, this is another candidate uh, for a Brownian motion on the space of probability measures. So uh, let me go back to this picture, which I like quite a lot. This in one, okay, this in one, is a one dimensional process on the space of probability measures. This could be an interesting candidate as a model of some substance or of a fluid, which, uh, which moves in a completely random fashion, but whose statistics Local st fluctuation statistics are really governed by the Wasserstein distance. So, so that's that's what it should be. Thank you for your attention. Thank you, Max. Can I just ask you to mute yes. for the? Thank you. Let me turn this back on. Uh, some questions, perhaps. Yeah, Christian. Thank you. So in your, in your last example, again, we have a, a discrete support, finite support, yes. yes. And uh, is it, uh, do you think you, it, do you have any candidate for a diffuse, uh, diffusion on vast science space, or is it really, really uh, uh, unavoidable to, to have this uh, discrete structure coming up? Yes, so yes. it is. I, I wish I, I wish I had a I wish I had a, a a a model which would not be discrete. Although the discreteness of this model here is already a more complicated discreteness than just 
a, a simple one because there's a continuum of, of ways how this thing pulsates. So it's quite complex, discrete, so to say. Uh, right. This equation here, if you look at this equation, in a way, it has no Laplacian operator. There's no smoothing in this, in this uh, system. And in the model that we did with Theo many years ago, where the entropy comes in, where we really have this Laplacian still, there we have measures which are really a Cantor type, which are, which are continuous, but not absolutely continuous. Uh, uh, right, so, but they are, they, are not, they are not atomic. And this is because in this model, if you like, we have the smoothing, still a smoothing operator, uh, which, which is also inserted into the system. So in a way, it's, it's quite correct, and I'm thankful for this question. In a way, what, what we did in the last couple of years was basically to try to understand or try to give stochastic processes which are driven by this dynamics alone and when this guy is not present. And therefore, you would not accept, we are ready to accept that something non-smooth is, is coming out. So, so in a sense, we were not kind of looking at it. Yes, uh, but, but uh, it's probably not the final word on, on, on your question. No, at this moment, the analysis and also the construction of these models is, is, is confined to, to, to a one dimensional state space, unfortunately. Uh, I should mention that there is uh, works, uh, of course, um, we are not the only people who looked into such problems. Um, there is work by uh, Lorenzo de los Schiavo who has a multi-dimensional interesting diffusion process, but so so but but uh, but in his situation the particles don't interact at all, and so the discrete structure does not change over time. So when the particles should meet and so forth, uh, we are still confined to a one-dimensional situation. If we want to have this interesting, really singular interaction. More questions? There's the chat. There's something, some activity in the chat. I'm not sure. Yeah, yeah, it's a very, very, very oh yeah. Okay. So uh, you you have a result uh, uh, of uh, converged mu to the capital N convert converges to mu. That that's a yes yes yes. Uh, Oh, next next page. Yes, here. Yeah. So so this is a. Uh, is this a, a mean field limit, or what? What's a capital M? It's a. No, it's it's not a mean field limit uh, because uh, this is not a mean and so we don't get a, a lot of large numbers. This model is meant to, okay, I don't know if it's a neutral linear, but this is beyond the conventional neutral linear. We have a system which has so strong correlations also on the, on the large scale that, that even in the high dynamic limit, we really have an honest stochastic Okay. Oh, okay. So no average, this is too much correlation for average. Okay. But this, this is beyond. So in the neutral limit, in my understanding, it's always. You have the thing, and then you get, 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 get this, this dynamic equation, right? This equation. Yes. That's not the case. Okay. So uh, the capital N here is. Number of particles. It's uh, a large thing. It's a large particle. Okay. The, the, uh, the this, this N is, is, uh, is not the same with a uh, with, uh, uh, little N in your. In your, in your you you have a theorem for the solution of the uh, yes. equation, right? So that's different. That's different. different. That's okay. Different okay. Thank you. So, so I think it's uh, time to close the session for this morning, and let's thank Max again. And uh, uh, sorry, one more question or announcement? I don't know. I don't know. Okay, so let's say bye to the internet and uh, we will see you tomorrow morning at 9.30. Bye. Yep.